Good evening and a very warm welcome. You're watching Primetime News on TV1. I'm Karuni Karuna Ratna. Let's take a look at your top stories for tonight. The goal is to advance in strong partnership with India to achieve Sri Lanka's development objectives. A statement from the President. No one has the authority to take decisive action on Sri Lanka's national assets during a presidential election period. Several factions raise concerns. SJB and NPP to challenge the imputed rental income tax in their government. UNP's Jaffna district organizer Arun Siddhar to support the Malbima Janata party. Eight dead, 31 injured in road accidents across Sri Lanka in 24 hours. On to your top story this evening, President Ranil Vikramasinghe emphasized that his primary focus is on providing rights to the people of the country. He made this statement during a ceremony held today in Batiklo. The new district secretariat building in Thirai Madhu Batiklo was constructed at a cost of 1.055 billion rupees. The event was attended by Eastern Province Governor Sendil Thondaman, other regional political representatives and a group of government officials. Under the Urumea program, 27,595 landless families in the Batiklu district are to receive freehold deeds, with 2,610 already granted. Additionally, 252 English diploma holders from the Higher National Engineering Diploma Institute received teacher appointments today, presided over by the President. The President has always advised us to make sure to modernize the agriculture technique to get more outputs so we are working on it on the Batiklo district. Second, he has also advised us to make sure the aquaculture is developed because it has the longest coastal belt, so which the fisheries department and we are working closely to promote the local farmers as well as the uh, business modules for more development for aquaculture projects. Same way, we have a huge deposits of mineral sands for which His Excellency President has advised us to make value addition and to promote the mineral sectors. So we are very keen on developing all this project under the guidance of His Excellency, the President. We must choose whether to continue borrowing as a bankrupt nation or to manage our debt and build a strong economy. Today, we are progressing with a focus on long-term vision and economic sustainability. It is our duty to maintain this trajectory, which is why we are dedicated to support the President. While many criticize the darkness, it takes a true leader to dispel it and bring in the light. This is why the President stepped in today. The country is developing thanks to the effective economic program implemented under his leadership. It is essential to provide some relief to the Tamil community and we are proud that this consensus has been reached. We, the people of this country, hope that a constitution should be established so that all people living in this country can live together. That's all that's left. We have endured a very challenging period and the common people of this country have suffered greatly. As we rebuild, we will never forget these people. The Urumea program was implemented to provide free land rights to the people. You now have legal title to your land. 
which no one can take from you. We have distributed over 27,000 free land deeds in this area. Governor will visit villages to hand over the land deeds. My sole objective is to ensure that land rights are given to people. President Ranil Vikramasinghe expressed his commitment to maintaining a strong partnership with India to achieve Sri Lanka's development goals. Emphasizing the urgency to expedite joint initiatives, President Vikramasinghe highlighted a comprehensive agenda aimed at transformative bilateral projects. The 31st All India Partners May 2024 was held in Colombo under the auspices of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. The All India Partners Meet 2024, organized by KPMG Sri Lanka and India, provided a platform for both countries to reaffirm their commitment to collaborative projects that promise to redefine bilateral relations and propel socio-economic growth. Chief Executive Officer of KPMG in India, Yesdin Nagparewala, and other leading Indian business and industry luminaries attended the event. Having now survived two difficult years, I must acknowledge that this was possible because India gave us a loan of three and a half billion dollars. We have just concluded director's meeting of the IMF, which was quite successful, and are preparing thereafter to meet with our uh, creditor nations, the Paris Club, India and others who meet at the official creditors committee next week and also carrying on discussions with China through the Exim Bank of China. Once we conclude the discussions, then we come to the next phase. So with this, we are ready to sign the agreements with our official creditors and with the Exim Bank of China. So next week on Wednesday, we'll be meeting with the OCC and also in the course of next week, we are carrying out discussions with the Exim Bank of China. And I hope by next week or thereafter that we will have come out of this phase of bankruptcy and into the next phase as we go ahead. The President also delivered a compelling vision for the future of Sri Lanka-India relations. If we go back to business the usual way, we are import-dependent economy and we will have to again borrow money to repay, to pay for our imports. So are we going to start the vicious circle again? Having done it once, am I to start the second round or otherwise to gradually transform ourselves into a highly competitive export-oriented economy? So this is the second task that we have. We can no longer go down that same path. Now this is easier said than done in Sri Lanka. So we've decided on a new approach that we are going to legislate our economic policy. Policies will follow to ensure economic transformation to a highly competitive economy, to a digital economy, to a green economy, to an export-oriented economy. So now at the moment, we have the Economic Transformation Bill, which is in Parliament and is undergoing pre-legislative scrutiny in the courts. Second is the second eye, which I have taken on today, which is on my agenda, that's India. When I was in Delhi last week, I met, discussed with Prime Minister Modi the need to accelerate the joint program that we have decided, agreed on. So the major ones were identified and Foreign Minister Jai Shankar came down to have a discussion. Now this will show the new path we are taking and a number of projects all will be in one parcel. It won't be individual projects. We've discussed a fair number of them. First is the grid interconnection between Sri Lanka and India. So that sustainable energy can be transmitted to India, where you all need that very badly. We have the Sampur Solar Power Project, which is a G2G project, and Three Island Project, which is where we hope the ground baking can take place in July. So that the basis of our energy partnership, and we are looking at developing Pork Strait for wind energy and solar energy, both countries to get together and have a large farm for solar energy, for 
renewable energy. It also means that we will have a new economy for the northern province which was worst affected by the wars. In addition to energy, we have also discussed India helping us to expand the Kankasanthure port, which is a major port on the Jaffna Peninsula, and to ensure that more business comes into the port. We are also discussing with India on airport development, on the Palale airport, on the Colombo airport, the other airports where the India firms can take part in the running of the airports in Sri Lanka. With Amul dairy, the NLD and the factories will be taken over by Amul and then they will be involved in the milk production in Sri Lanka both directly through the farms and indirectly through independent farmers. There has also been the land connectivity, the corridor. We've done pre-feasibility studies and now we've agreed jointly to call for the feasibility study. And finally, the major events that we've talked is the development of Trincomalee. How we develop Trincomalee as a harbour which can then feed Tamil Nadu. The development of Trincomalee will include investment zones for industry. There will also be tourism areas. But the development of Trincomalee as a port jointly by India and Sri Lanka by our companies. And finally, the multi-product oil pipeline, which will come in from Nagapatnam to Trincomalee. We are waiting the final observations of it. So there will be one pipeline. Sri Lanka is planning to relocate its refinery in Trincomalee. There has also been an application by another Indian company from Tamil Nadu to build another refinery. If that's so, then we'll have two refineries and oil to make it oil center. Together with building the port and the investment zones, that certainly would make Trincomalee a major harbor in the Bay of Bengal. So it's in this direction that we are now working to put together the infrastructure and the connectivity in different fields, energy, oil, to begin with. This is the what the government, two governments will do to encourage joint ventures or individual investments into Sri Lanka in different fields. Speaking at a media briefing today, the All Ceylon Agrarian Federation stressed that no one has the authority to take decisive action on Sri Lanka's national assets during a presidential election period. In 25 days, the Election Commission will be empowered to announce the date for the presidential election. Two very important institutions for this country, Milko and 31 farmlands of NLDB, are slated to be sold according to a plan to privatize national assets. We have information that a cabinet paper for this sale is planned to be resubmitted on the 26th. We warn you that you have no right to sell these institutions. You have not been given a mandate by the people to do so. All of those involved must be held accountable to the people of this country. <laughs> Janata Vidri Utrabadin the Sid the Venama. We are Bararaganami Kote Adin Kote Adela Gedarean Amisa, Megatina Sampa Tikunan Duata Itila Namirate, Janata. The people of this country have not given you a mandate to sell our national assets. You must be held accountable if you proceed before the election. The upcoming election will surely result in a mandate to protect our assets. No one consents to this attempted theft of our country's assets within 28 days. Representatives of the fishermen associations in the northern province convened a media briefing in Jaffna today. We request President Ronald Vikramasinghe to protect our sea and our livelihood. The government should stop selling the islands to multinational companies and foreign countries under the guise of development. Look at how India is handling Sri Lanka, a country emerging as a powerful force is trying to conquer a small country through pressure. India has enslaved Sri Lanka by giving loans, aid and development projects. 
So what will our future become? Although the Minister of External Affairs recently came to Sri Lanka under the pretext of developing the northeast, it seems that India is trying to take over large lands in the northern and eastern provinces. It is clear that India is spreading its dominance under the guise of development. Their plan has been fulfilled today and our plans have been shattered. <laughs> The second generation organization claims that the attempt to sell off the country will fail. As the second generation political movement, we are working towards defeating the attempt of making this country a part of India by making it a state through the EDC agreement. Sirimavo and Vijay Veera made a great effort to stop selling this country to India today who will raise their hand against the laws that are harmful to this country. The Sea of Sri Lanka, the treasure that surrounds the pearl. Eight times our land territory. The Sea of Sri Lanka holds our future. It holds our potential. Let's protect what is ours. Let's call it what it is, the Sea of Sri Lanka. The imputed rental income tax set to be levied from April 2025 is igniting debate among stakeholders. Various parties expressed views on this matter today as well. When implemented in 2026, the imputed rental income tax is expected to generate an estimated revenue of 150 billion. Currently, this tax generates less than 100 billion rupees. However, there are outstanding tax areas of 1.131 trillion rupees that remain uncollected. The government has to collect 20 billion rupees from negotiated taxes within the revenue department over the past 15 years. There are a staggering 57.565 trillion rupees in tax areas that are 11 to 15 years overdue, 208.81 billion from about 5 to 10 years. Instead of focusing on collecting outstanding areas, particularly from those with political affiliations, they are proposing a new tax that some perceive as burdensome. This is why the National People's Power is investigating the potential oppressiveness of this tax and advocating for its review. We are actively working against the implementation of this policy. <laughs> The imputed rental income tax will take effect on the 1st of April 2025. It won't apply to homeowners who rent out an additional property. Let's consider Sharma as an example. If she owns a second house that remains vacant while she lives elsewhere, then the tax would apply to the vacant property. This is because owning an unused property suggests financial means. People with limited resources wouldn't build houses to simply keep them unoccupied. Similarly, the tax would target people who own multiple vacant apartments in complexes. The aim is to ensure those with wealth contribute to their fair share without burdening ordinary citizens. <laughs> Now, road accidents across Sri Lanka have left eight people dead and 31 injured in the past 24 hours. Police said the fatalities included two school students aged 16 and 17. Road accidents were reported from Mathale, Chilau, Thale Mana, Mihintale and Manampitia during the 24-hour window that ended at 7 p.m. today. A head-on collision between a three-wheeler and a bus in Mathale claimed the lives of a 54-year-old woman and her 17-year-old daughter. The bus traveling from Dambula to Kandy collided with a three-wheeler carrying the family. The father and the son in the three-wheeler sustained injuries and were admitted to the Mathale District General Hospital. Another deadly accident took place early this morning on the Chilau Putlam Road. A luxury bus traveling from Jaffna to Colombo collided with a tractor, resulting in the death of a 58 year old woman and injuring 13 others. The bus was carrying a group returning from Poson Pilgrimage in Giribaba. The bus driver was arrested for careless driving. <laughs> Thank you.
A van veered off the road and hit an electric pole near Madhavachir, killing one person and injuring five. The accident claimed the life of a 72-year-old woman, a resident of Sainthamarudu. Two people were seriously injured in a collision between two lorries that occurred last night in Mihintale, Anuradhapura. A 22-year-old resident of Manampitiya was injured yesterday in a collision between a defender and a motorcycle along the Mahiangana Polon Narua Road. The defender, which was carrying a group of officers belonging to the Thalangama Army Commando Regiment, was reportedly travelling towards Polon Narua at the time of the incident. The driver of the defender has been arrested. Five drowning incidents were reported in Anuradhapura yesterday. The immediate action of the police life safety teams managed to save those lives. The lifeguards were praised by the Inspector General of Police, Deshabandhu Tennakorn, today. Even though so many devotees have come, they have been able to engage in religious activities very peacefully without any disruption. Due to the success of the life safety teams, five lives have been saved so far from drowning. There are about 300 police officers deployed near every bathing location in this area. The public has also shown a lot of support and appreciation regarding this duty provided by the police. The Election Commission will be empowered to proclaim the date for the presidential election in 25 days. After a United National Party meeting in Gaul, the district leaders expressed their opinions about the possible changes that could happen when it will be announced that the president would contest for the upcoming presidential election. We hope that the president will hear out the demands of the people. Many people are afraid of Rani Vikramasinghe contesting the election. They make false statements saying he's not contesting because they know a lot of people around them will join and support Rani Vikramasinghe. Let us see in the future as it will be announced soon. All political parties should act with national consensus within the national framework. When looking at our neighboring country, they have made great progress. Prime Minister Modi is ruling that country. People of Sri Lanka has to decide who is the Modi in Sri Lanka. <laughs> Who will the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna support in the upcoming presidential election? Does the party have its own presidential candidate? Or will the party extend their support to another candidate? Two MPs have expressed views on the matter today. Minister Dr. Bandulagunavadana said he will only support a candidate who will continue to work together with the International Monetary Fund. ಮಗೇಸಾಯಿಯಾತ್ಮಕ <laughs> This is what MP Ranjit Bandara had to say. ಜನಾಧಿಪತಿ <laughs> 
United National Party's Jaffna district organizer Arun Siddharth joined a media briefing in Colombo today and expressed his support for the Maubhima Janata Party. The Maubhima Janata Party leader Dilip Jayavira appointed him as the Jaffna district chief organizer of the party. We believe this is the voice we need. We are very happy to welcome him to our board of directors and hope he will serve as the chief district organizer of Jaffna. When Rani Vikramasinghe visited Jaffna, he invited me to join the UNP. I accepted the invitation to work together with them. They appointed me as the district organizer of Jaffna. But when working with them, I wondered what they did with people like Sambandhan and Vigneswaran for 40 to 50 years. Therefore, I walked out. This is an open invitation to the youth. We can only move forward with new leaders and parties like this one. I believe we should work together for the sake of our country, to revive our country. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa highlighted that for the first time in history, an opposition party is working without state funding. I'm being mercilessly criticized inside and outside parliament for this program, except for our faction. Everyone else is attacking the Sakwala program. The Husma program is being attacked because of jealousy, hatred, anger and the incompetence of the attackers. They can't tolerate our actions. They are struggling because the opposition is working for the first time in the history of Sri Lanka without any government funding. I can't believe that anyone would be against distributing something in a bankrupt country. All of us should help the country and the people regardless of race, religion, caste, class or party. <laughs> The opposition leader expressed these views while joining the 250th phase of the Sakwala Smart Classrooms program. Under the program, equipment for a smart classroom was donated to the Mavatagama National School in Kurunagalo. A donation of 200,000 rupees was also made to the dancing troupe and netball team of the school. Fear of illness shouldn't be a daily reality. The Anamadu Base Hospital receives a lifeline, a repaired dialysis unit, essential medical equipment and a brand new water purification system. The 20th World Buddhist Sangha Youth General Conference and the 5th World Alliance of Buddhists General Conference was held today. A historic gathering of Buddhist youth and leaders is taking place in Jaffna, Sri Lanka, marking the 20th General Conference of the World Buddhist Sangha Youth and the 5th General Conference of the World Alliance of Buddhists. The conference, which began today, featured a schedule aimed at strengthening ties between Buddhist organizations and promoting the values of the religion among young generations. The day commenced with a traditional blessing, featuring chanting from the Theravada, Mahayana and Vajrayana traditions. This was followed by the lighting of an oil lamp and a vibrant cultural performance by Jaffna dancers. Most venerable Navadgala Padumaki Thithisanai Kamahatero, abbot of the Nagadipa Raja Mahavihara in Jaffna, officially issued a special stamp marking the conference. The day concluded with a gift exchange ceremony. first with the people. Fox Jaffna, a beloved ancestral home turned heritage hotel, proudly celebrates its sixth anniversary today. 
Fox Jaffna, a beloved heritage hotel, marks its sixth anniversary revolutionizing Jaffna's hospitality scene. Since opening, it captivated guests with its rich history, stunning landscapes, delicious cuisine and unwavering dedication to Jaffna's culture. This home was the home of our late chairman, Mr. Rajamanthan, whose dream was to turn it into a hotel. And we did that for him. We turned this into a hotel, and now it's one of the best hotels in the North. Over these six years, we won many awards, including the SATA Award, the South Asian Travel and Tourism Award for the best hotel in the North. The best heritage hotel was won by us. Fox Jaffna meticulously preserves its century-long history, blending heritage with modern luxury. Two restored wartime bunkers showcase the peninsula's resilience. One houses an art gallery featuring the famed 43 Group, while the other is a transformed history museum revealing Jaffna's pre-war legacy. Speaking at the 56th regular session of Human Rights Council in Geneva, Sri Lanka advocated for a new approach to addressing human rights concerns. We request the Council to engage in a constructive dialogue with the country concerned and acknowledge the progress made by domestic processors. Sri Lanka opposes country-specific mandates of this Council without the consent of the country concerned. Such mandates only serve to polarize and divide and as such are unproductive. The work of this Council should be based on the guiding principles in the General Assembly Resolution 60-251 and the IB package. Sri Lanka reiterates that principles of sovereign equality, respect for territorial integrity and non-interference should guide the work of the Council and that it would be unproductive to continue country-specific mandates without the support of the country concerned. The Lawyers' Collective has strongly condemned statements made in Parliament, including those by President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Issuing a statement, the Lawyers' Collective believes such statements, immediately prior to an election, to be politically expedient and aim to cause uncertainty and loss of confidence of the people in the judiciary and democratic processes. The Lawyers' Collective has strongly condemned statements made in Parliament by a group including President Rani Vikramasinghe, Justice Minister Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksha, Education Minister Dr. Susil Premajayanta and MP Dayasiri Jayasekara. The condemnation stems from comments made by the President and Ministers critical of recent Supreme Court decisions. The President referred to a ruling on the Gender Equality Bill as judicial cannibalism and proposed a parliamentary select committee to review it. The the Justice Minister compared the court's orders to the suspension of civil rights by Adolf Hitler. These statements, along with allegations against judges by the Justice Minister, are seen as attempts to intimidate the judiciary. The Lawyers' Collective highlights the importance of judicial independence as a cornerstone of Sri Lanka's democracy. They argue that the executive's comments threaten the rule of law, separation of powers and public confidence in the judiciary. While acknowledging the right to free expression, the Collective emphasizes the responsibility of the executive to maintain the balance of power and avoid eroding the authority of other government branches. The statement expressed concern that these statements are part of a larger pattern of intimidation by the executive, particularly in the context of recent legal challenges to government actions. They believe the statements are politically motivated and aim to undermine public trust in the judiciary and democratic process. In a move aimed at bolstering global climate action, the World Bank Group and the International Monetary Fund announced today the launch of the Enhanced Cooperation Framework for Climate Action. Here are the details on the News First Finance Report. Day 29 of the third phase of the LOLC Divi Savio program, which is being carried out for the betterment of Sri Lanka's future generation, got underway today.
Today's program was centered around the Dimulagala Zonal Education Office of the Polonnaruwa District. Under the Divisavia program, exercise books and stationary equipment required for one year are distributed free of charge to government schools with less than 150 students. Accordingly, school bags and stationary equipment were donated to students at the Sila Lankara Primary School, Mahadamana Primary School, Sugala Devi Primary School, Susirigama Primary School, Mutugala Tamil Junior School, Alanchipotan Muslim Junior School, Mahasenpura Primary School, Ihalababa Primary School, Nishankamalapura Primary School, Ihala Yakure Primary School, Gallalia Primary School, and the Alutoya Gamini Primary School this morning. The LOLC Divisavia program continues to forge ahead for the future generation of Sri Lanka. And that concludes this Saturday's edition of Primetime News on TV1. Thank you for watching. Take care and have a good night.